Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, episode of the laser light projector that we're doing um, on our live stream today. I have helping me, I have Angelo online. Um, Aaron is actually away for a while. I, I don't know this for a fact, but I think he had his baby and so he's actually off for a while um, on vacation. So Angelo is helping me out again. So uh, thanks Angelo very much. Um, today we're going to be working on uh, part three. Um, this is the middle uh, part of the uh, laser light projector and it looks sort of complicated. Um, as you can see as I'm rotating around, lots of plastic parts kind of holding things inside this whole unit and that's kind of why I saved this one, um, you know, the, the hardest one for last. So this is what we're going to be doing. Um, <clears throat> And I am fighting a little bit of a cold, so I apologize if I cough or whatever, if I go on mute. Um, I did upload the drawing for this and also my cryptic outline. I did that last time on the last live stream and people seem to like that and follow along. So I did the same thing with this one. And then I also uh, uploaded a, a small file of a stepper motor that we're going to be using in this design. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So this is the drawing that I'm using, and it looks sort of complicated, um, but don't worry about that. And it's, this is not an official drawing. In fact, the dimensions that you see on here are pretty much just for what I'm using in the outline. So you'll notice not everything is, oops, is detailed or dimensioned or anything like that. Um, so the dimensions you see will um, be useful to you as you're going through the outline or following along in this video. Um, and just like last time, like I mentioned, I highly recommend coming back and watching this video a couple times because um, we're going to be going through lots of steps. And, um, you know, you can always rewind and you can change the speed by hitting the little gear icon in YouTube. You can change the speed if you want to slow it down or speed it up. I'm going to be talking about different methodologies for making this, this plastic part. We're actually going to break it down into smaller pieces, almost kind of like subsystems, and then we're going to kind of combine them together. Okay, so let's start off with where we left off last time. So last time uh, we worked on the front and the back, and this middle part was just kind of ignored, and that's kind of what I'm going to be working on today is this middle part. Okay, and you can see right now, it's just basically a piece that was split out of that main top level body. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, split this in half and so we can create those decals that were on there, um, those red and green brushed metal decals. And I'm gonna do this kind of at the beginning because I have a very basic shape right here. So I want to split this right down the middle, and the easiest way to do that is to use the mid-plane construction plane. So I'm going to say mid-plane, and it's asking for the two planes. So I'm going to say that plane there, and that plane there, and you can see that it split it right down the middle, or actually it created a plane right down the middle. Now I can use that to split the face. Now I don't want to split the body because splitting the body would slice it right in half. I only want to split the face and we're going to change the appearance of those faces. So you can see faces to split will be that one. Splitting tool will be that plane. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And just like I showed last time, I like to expand open my um, stuff over here. So for example, the bodies and the construction underneath that component, that mid component. Okay, so and the reason for that is so I can turn that plane off really easily and we can see that sure enough the outside is split but the inside is not. Okay, let's do the appearance. So I'm going to hit A for appearance and you can see it shows the appearances that are already in this design. The first thing I want to do is I want to change this to faces because I don't want to change the whole body. I just want to modify the appearance of an individual face. I'm also going to use a metal appearance. So I'm going to go into aluminum and I'm going to scroll down and you'll notice there's one here called aluminum brushed linear. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that onto one of those faces and you can see it has kind of this brushed looking look. However, it's going the wrong direction. Well, now I can edit this. So I'm gonna right click in my appearance and say edit. And right here it says rotation. As I start to drag this slider, you can see that we can rotate those um, stripes or whatever. And in fact, I'll just kind of hit this little up arrow to hit 90. And so now you can see that they're rotating in the correct direction. The other thing I'm going to do is pick the color that I want. Let's just do kind of a nice red, something like so. And I might even name this. I'll call it decal red or something like that or sticker red or something. You can change the roughness to make it look more like, you know, almost like aluminum foil. So I might do something like 0.085 in this case. And you can kind of see it looks pretty reflective, pretty neat. Okay. Now I've already spent some time with this, so I'm going to go ahead and right click and say duplicate. And it creates an exact duplicate of it. And then I can just edit this guy. And I don't have to change the rotation. I don't have to change the roughness. All I need to do is change the color. So I'm going to go to like a green and I'll call this decal green. And now I can drag that onto that face. And we now have the Christmas type colors. Um, this is just a sticker that was on the outside of this. So that's just kind of to start out with. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to turn my front and back back on. And I don't know if you remember uh, last time we created these indentations for you know this front piece to slide over the middle piece and this back piece to slide over the middle uh, the middle piece also but obviously we need to change this middle piece so I'm gonna just click and hold to probe through my design so I'm just clicking my left mouse button holding it down for about a second and now you can see that I can actually probe through and grab for example that face so it's almost like a laser okay now this is the smaller face of the front. I want to make sure I'm grabbing the right face. So I'm going to go ahead and click this guy. And we'll say offset faces. Okay. Now what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to change the length of this face. You can kind of see how that's growing. And I obviously want to um, make it snap to this face right here. So I'm going to click and hold again and I'm probing through until it snaps to that face. So watch what happens when I click there, it offsets up to that face, okay? So I'll do the same thing back here. I want to basically move this face to over here. So click and hold, make sure I'm grabbing the right face. It looks like this guy here. I'll do the uh, offset command again or offset face. I like to start to drag to kind of see what's going to happen. And then again, I'm just going to click and hold and probe through until I get the face that I want, which is that face there. So you can see that we just kind of changed the length of these faces using the existing geometry. Okay. So now what I want to use is use the existing geometry to modify this part. So we're going to do the combine cut. So the target body is gonna be this body here. And the tool bodies, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to cut so you can kind of see what's gonna happen here. The tool body is gonna be that. Notice when I click on it, the cool result that we get. It's using the front to subtract Boolean away some geometry. In fact, I can do uh, both at the same time. Now the important thing here is I wanna keep the tools. The tools are the front and the back and obviously we like them we want to keep them so I'm going to turn on keep tools and say OK and we just use the front and the back to let me turn these guys off to create those little indentations right there so that they'll slide together. Kind of a cool trick instead of having to do like a revolute or you know create a sketch etc. We're using existing geometry to help us out. Okay, I don't wanna jump back and forth too much into the drawing, um, but what we're gonna work on now is this front region right here. 
Okay, and like I mentioned before, everything is on the drawing. So for example, I'm gonna start basically 0.8 inches from the front of the ring. So let me get back into here. And let's just do an offset face or an offset plane. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click this front plane and let's offset that uh, 0.8, just like it showed in the drawing. And you can see that it's gonna start from that front face and move 0.8 forward. Then I can start to create my sketch. Now, this is a fairly symmetrical part, so I'm gonna basically draw half of it. But like I mentioned before, we're gonna, we're gonna kinda cut this down into smaller components and then combine them together. Instead of trying to do a really complex sketch or a really complex design, we're gonna break it down into its simplest forms. So um, I'm gonna start with some sketches. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna create a line and um, I'm just gonna start here. In fact, actually I'm gonna project this inside ring. I like to project geometry, that way it's my lines are catching to it. So you'll notice as I get near that line, it's actually catching to it. So for example, I can just hover over here and it'll snap to it. I'll hover over here and you'll see it'll turn to a little X and it's snapped to that edge. And you can see that by those little black dots. Okay. Then I'll go ahead, I'm gonna turn that into a construction line. Um, Cause so you can see right now it's actually split my circular profile in half, okay? But if I were to select that and turn it to a construction line, it, it's no longer an object line and it doesn't split it in half anymore. I'll go ahead and offset these. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's go, again, according to the drawing and according to the outline. So if, if for whatever reason there's a dimension miss, missing on the uh, drawing, just follow the outline, um, 0.665. So I'm basically building kind of the, the big front part of this. Um, I'll go ahead and also create a circle. And again, I usually kind of go offset a little bit um, and then force it to go into the correct location. So I know that this is supposed to be 0.75 in diameter, but I want it to be perfectly lined up. So I'll come in here and say, I want that point to be vertical or horizontal with that point there. And you can kind of see how I did that. Then I can come in and throw a dimension to specify where is it supposed to be. So it's supposed to be 0.8 down from the center. So you can kind of see how that line turned black, which means it's fully constrained. Okay. And then I'm going to draw a line, um, again, kind of right from the center all the way up to the top. Okay, what this is gonna do is I'm gonna use this line um, to break this part into smaller sections. So I'm gonna just say offset this line to the left. Um, let's go 1.375 and I need to go negative. I'm gonna do everything kind of on the left side here. So I created the line that kind of cut through the center and then I've offset that, the, the 1.375. You can kind of see that there. Okay, so again, kind of keeping my sketches, oops, my sketches simple, um, I'm gonna just use this as my main profile. So I'm gonna say finish sketch, and you'll see that we have this region here, and then I also have this region here gonna keep it just half of it. I'm not gonna do this region over here. I'm just gonna kind of focus on half and then we'll obviously mirror that later on. So I select my profiles and then I'll go ahead and extrude that. And I like to start to extrude back so I can kind of see what that's gonna look like. And I want it to go to this back face. So I'm just gonna click on that back face. Okay, now here's the important thing. You'll notice my operation says new body. I want to make this a new body. I don't want it to join or anything like that. I kind of want to work on it as a separate body. And then when I'm happy with it, I'll join it to the main part. And the reason I do this is it helps solve, it helps uh, simplify some of the solves. 
So if I'm always modifying my main body and I'm doing fillets and chamfers, all kind of stuff, it has to calculate all of that. But by breaking it down into smaller chunks, we're just focusing on that small chunk. And when we're happy with it, we can then join it. And that's kind of what you're going to see throughout today's live stream. So I'm going to say new body and I get something that looks like this. Okay. Again, you'll notice in my previous live streams, I never fill it in 2D, hardly ever. I always fill it in 3D. Um, that way it's a feature in my timeline. So there's my feature in my timeline. I can always come back and change that if I need to. I find it much easier than using sketches. Okay, I'll expand, open my sketches over here. I'm gonna turn that sketch back on. Because remember this line that I created? I'm going to use that to split this gray body. What's my splitting tool? I'll say this line here. I'll say OK. And now you'll see that I actually have two separate bodies. OK. And the reason for that is kind of how this part's designed. Um, let, me, let me turn my camera back on here. It's kind of hard to see. but you can kind of see it's, it's hollow in here. My fingers are in the way, but it's also hollow in here. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on. I'm kind of splitting it into two separate parts. And you'll probably, jumping ahead, you probably know that I'm gonna use the shell command. I really like the shell command. It is, it's extremely useful. So for example, I can select this face here and I'm gonna to start to drag so you can kind of see what that's gonna do. It's gonna shell that out. Now I wanna specify um, the thickness, which is supposed to be 0 0.04, and I'm also gonna select this side face. And watch what it does. It opens it up. Now I didn't select the back, so the back is still solid, okay? But Check out how quickly I created this, you know, this C-shaped part, right? I didn't have to use a complex profile. I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm gonna go ahead and shell this guy, but this time I'm gonna select, for example, this top face. I start to give it a thickness, and this is actually a different thickness. This is a little bit thicker, this is 0.1. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this side face here. And now you'll notice it's going to leave this front face for me. I also don't need this back face, so I'm going to probe through and select that back face. And then check this out. I also don't want this face here or this face here. And look at the result that I'm going to get here using just the shell command. So I started with a big block, but I wanna keep this little section down here because this is where the stepper motor mounts to. And I wanna keep that front face. So it's a really cool way to create complex geometry. So that's kind of like half of that plastic part. Okay. Again, I think the shell command is underutilized and it's extremely powerful. So now these are two separate parts. I'm gonna go ahead and combine them back together. So under the modify menu, combine, or I also have it as, my, uh, as part of my toolbar here. What's my target? I'll go ahead and say this guy. What's my tool? I'll say that guy. Now obviously this time I don't wanna cut, I want to join. And I don't want it in our main ring around there, okay? So there we go, pretty cool. Okay, now a lot of this is just kind of machining and cutting things away. So I'm gonna create a sketch on that face there. And if your screen kind of rotates, not like how you want it to, you can just hover over the cube up here and you'll see these big rotation arrows. If I click that guy, you'll see it'll rotate 90 degrees. Now, some people like to model in you know, isometric mode. Sometimes I actually like to model in isometric mode. Okay, so I'm going to create my sketch and you can see it's actually on this face right here, right? But I'm kind of looking at it isometrically. 
instead of orthographic. Uh, let's go ahead and project. I usually use the P key, but I'm going to go ahead and project. Um, let me kind of zoom up here. I'm going to grab that edge there. Okay. And then I want to, actually I lied, I picked the wrong edge, <laughs> let me P for project. I want to project that, at the farther back edge, I apologize. Then I'm just going to create a rectangle and as I, if I get near this edge, it snaps to it automatically. So it's actually going to do a coincident constraint for me automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and I don't really care what size rectangle this is. We're going to use it to machine a bunch of stuff away. Okay. <clears throat> what I do care about is the distance that this rectangle is from this edge. And I'm going to put it out here so you can see the dimension. And that's supposed to be um, 0 0.30. So I'm going to say 0.3. And you'll see it moves that rectangle over. Now I showed this last time. I'm still in my sketch menu or my sketch environment, I should say, I can click on my profiles, right mouse click, and say extrude. So I don't even have to end or finish my sketch. Now the only thing with this is you'll notice that there's two extrudes, and I, I mentioned this in my last live stream. The first one is the one you wanna use. The second one, the tan one, is to extrude surfaces, like thin wall, surfaces. It wouldn't be a solid. So always use this one. You'll also notice the E key next to it for the shortcut. If I move away, you can see the E there. That's the other way I remember. So I'm going to say extrude. Start to drag. And I want it to go all the way through. So I'm going to click this bottom face. But notice the issue. Okay. It's cutting through my mid body. So be really aware of this. Now you have two options. You could turn it off over here, or in your extrude menu, you have objects to cut. And it's showing me that it's cutting through the mid and it's cutting through body three. So I'm gonna turn that guy off, and you'll notice it's still cutting through the gray part, but it's no longer cutting through the blue part. Okay, and if you accidentally you know, let's say you said okay or whatever, and you're like, oops, you could always go back to the extrude, turn this guy open and turn that guy off, say okay, and you didn't ruin your model. Okay, so you can kind of see I just removed some material here. We want to chamfer these edges, and again, all of these steps are in the outline. But I'm going to go ahead and say chamfer um, with 0.1. And I'll go ahead and select the second one also. So kind of just knocking those short, sharp corners off. Okay, hopefully this is making sense. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna start um, adding some of the geometry that we see to the front of this design. And you can kind of see there's lots of circles and um, there's going to be these little ribs and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm going to start doing next is positioning these circles. Um, in fact, I think they are, yeah, they're dimensioned in this section view right here. So that's the information I'm going to be using, the different size circles and their locations. So I'm just going to create a sketch on this face. So I pre-select the face, right mouse click and say create sketch. There we go. Okay, and again, I just throw some um, some circles on here. I don't really care what size they are right now. Um, I'm just gonna do something like this and a circle up here. Okay, I just kind of get the basic idea on the screen and then I can come in and be more precise. So for example, I'm gonna dimension this circle and it's supposed to be 0.425. So is this circle. So I'm gonna dimension it and then I can click on my pre-existing dimension and it will equal that. Or I could have used the equal constraint. Okay. Throw a dimension on this guy. Um, he's supposed to be 0.1 it looks like. And this one is supposed to be um, 0.25. 
0.3. Okay, now I want to position these where they're supposed to be. So, for example, I want this one to be horizontal vertical with this, and I want that guy to be horizontal vertical with that also. Same thing here. I want this circle to be coincident, so I'm going to come in and say, co uh, sorry, coincident, concentric. I'm going to say I want that circle to be concentric with that arc. And notice it's turned black. It means it's fully constrained. And then finally, I'm going to throw some dimensions on here. So this is supposed to be um, 0.5. And this is supposed to be 0.4. I'll put, I'll put them right here. 0.4. Moves that guy over. This one, again, I just need to reference the drawing. Um, he's supposed to be 1.15 over and a certain distance up, which is 0.1 in this case. Now you'll notice that all of my circles are fully constrained, which is a good thing, right? So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. And then I'm just going to go ahead and extrude these profiles through. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these profiles. Now I could just select this profile here, but you'll notice I tend to select all of it. I, I don't mind cutting away air. And the reason for that is what if this face was slightly tapered, like at one degree or something like that? It's much better to machine a bunch of it away than just this little tiny profile. Okay, not necessary, but that's, that's just my methodology. Not saying that's correct, but that's what I like to do. Okay, like for example, I didn't have to select that profile there, but I went ahead and did. I mean, it's it basically, um, confirms that it's going to machine all of that area away. Okay, so we've just kind of punched those holes through there. Okay, um, I'm following my outline, so I'm making sure I'm on track with all of you. Okay, now here's, I get this question every so often. I created a sketch here to create this geometry. I could go back and edit that sketch. That's totally fine to create more geometry. But if I were to edit this sketch, you'll notice that my holes go away. The circles are there, but the actual physical holes aren't because it hasn't happened in time yet, okay? However, now if I say create a sketch on that face, we see the geometry but I've created another sketch. So which is right? Honestly, I don't know. It's really up to you, the designer. I personally, I don't mind having multiple sketches. I like to keep them simple. I don't mind if I have five or six sketches to define one area of a part. But again, it's up to you. I'm not telling you how I'm doing it is correct. It's really just a method I like. I like to kind of see it in time, what it's gonna look like. Okay, so now I'm going to create those little ribs that you saw. So I'm going to use the offset command. And we want to offset these uh, 0 0.04. Now you'll notice it says sketch curves. And usually if it has an S after it, it means that it's plural. But you'll notice I can't pick other edges. And the reason for that is the sketch curves are if they're chained all together, for example. So I do have to do this in a couple different steps. So I'm gonna say 0 0.04 for that. And then check this out. If I just pick this one edge, it's only gonna do that one edge. But if I have chain selected turned on, notice it's gonna grab all of those edges. And I wanna offset in, so I'm gonna say minus 0 0.04. And so that's what it means by, by sketch curves. It's grabbing all of those curves. Okay, so you can kind of see we're starting to create what these little ribs are going to look like. Now in the outline, I basically have a huge image of saying make your sketch look like this. So here's what your sketch is going to look like. I'm going to create a line that 
goes down from these little corners right here, these little where this arc is, okay? And I'm going to convert those to construction lines, okay? Then I'm also gonna create, I want a line tangent from this circle. So I'm gonna just click and hold, and you can see that it's gonna create a tangent line for me automatically. So I'll come over to here, and you can kinda of see it's gonna to snap to that edge. I'll click and hold, it's gonna be tangent and snap to that edge, okay? Then I'm gonna use the offset command quite a bit. So I'll go ahead and say offset, and let's offset, um, I think actually I wanna go in, so I'm gonna say minus 0.04. Right and click and drag straight up to repeat your last command. So here I can say 0.04, okay? Then I want to offset these lines. So I'm gonna say offset. Now if I said 0.04, it would go too far. I wanna go half of that. So I could say 0.04 divided by two, or I could just type in 0.02, <laughs> okay? So again, a little repetitive here. So I'm gonna just click and drag straight up to repeat my last command. And I'll go this direction, minus 0.02. Right click and drag straight up to repeat my last command. And I'll do that guy, 0.02. Now, some of you might be saying, well, why aren't you gonna use the rib command or the web command that you've shown? And that's a really great idea in this case. I really wish I could have, but because this is a flat face, those commands don't work. They typically work in, a, in an indentation. Let me show you what I mean by that. Um, let me just switch out here real quick. If I said create web, you'll notice that the preview image kind of shows it inside that box cutter. Well, because I don't have an indentation, I can't use those commands. Trust me, I tried. I was like, oh, that'd be a really quick way of creating this geometry. Okay. So I, I've created all of these, um, this geometry, but you'll notice I have a lot of overlapping lines. And I've said in previous live streams that I don't really tend to trim unless I absolutely need to. And in this case, I'm actually gonna trim because I kind of want to make this all one web. So I'm gonna hit the little trim icon here and I'm just gonna walk around and you can see when I click, it's gonna go ahead and trim this geometry for me, okay? Um, so it is gonna take a little bit of time for me to do that where I wanna open all of this up into kind of like one web. Now, do I have to do this? No, I don't. But the only reason I am doing this is because I know there's some people out there that like to have the sketch to be as exact as the final um, product. So instead of having a bunch of overlapping lines, they would spend the time coming in here and trimming these lines. And so that's why I'm doing it in this case. It's not absolutely necessary, but you'll see here when I'm done with this, it'll look much nicer and give a better representation of what this is going to look like. Okay, so there you can kind of see that's all one web, if you want to call it that. So I'll go ahead and trim these areas. And it's hard to tell, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim this because if I left this, I'd have a big solid chunk coming through the center. So I'm gonna trim that. But now I'm left with these little dots right here. So I'm gonna come in and say extend. So instead of trimming, we're gonna say extend. And all I have to do is click and you'll see that it extended that line. I'll do the same thing here. Even though this is a curve, it's gonna extend that curve to the next boundary, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and say finish sketch. Now, you'll notice my profile is not fully constrained or anything like that. And in this case, I don't really care. Um, all we're doing is using this kind of as a reference to extrude this out. I could spend the time constraining things and fixing things, etc. 
but all I want to do is use this as a profile. So I'm going to go ahead, select that profile, and say extrude. I like to start to drag. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and select that profile at the same time. Start to drag, and the distance this needs to go um, is 0 0.08. I'll say, and I want to join that. Okay, so I'll say OK. Now, I purposely made a mistake. I wanted to show you. I forgot to do this area here, and if I and we'll come back to this in just a second. But I wanted to point this out. I purposely left this here because I want to recreate what typically happens in somebody's design. Okay, we we all make mistakes, including myself. Um, and and I actually ran into this when I was practicing this, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna definitely show this as we go through. So we'll fix that here in a minute. Okay, we now have this particular shape. Yes, it took some time to create that sketch, but we now have a nice looking plastic part and we're pretty much done with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mirror this to the other side. So I'm gonna say mirror. I wanna make sure I'm mirroring the body, okay? What's the mirror plane? We'll go ahead and click on that face there and we'll say okay. Now you'll notice mirror does not combine them together. It just basically creates a mirror of it. Okay. Well, I don't want that line through the center. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine that part and that part together. We're going to join them together and say okay. And now you can see it's all one part. Okay, now sometimes you might have a line that appears or whatever, um, but it, you'll notice that this face is totally solid. Okay, and then here's that issue I was telling you about. I'm like, oh man, I totally forgot to do that. Now I could delete those out, but instead, let's go back to the sketch. Let's trim that line and let's extend that curve and that curve. I'll say finish sketch and notice what it did. It still did the downstream processes. It still did the extrude, it still did the mirror, and it still did the combine. So you can always go back and make changes if necessary to your design. Pretty cool. Now I'm actually done with this, with this main part right here. So I'm going to go ahead and combine it with the, uh, the mid part. So I'll say combine. Now here's a tip. It's asking for the target body and the tool body. Now does it matter which one is the target? And the answer is yes. I always click the body I want to keep the name of. So notice the blue part is called mid and the gray part is called body three. So if the target is the blue part and the tool is body three. When I join them together, notice it kept the part mid. Okay, I'm gonna undo and I'll do the exact same thing but the opposite. So I'm gonna say the target body is this guy the tool body is the blue part. And when I say okay, watch what happens. I lose my appearances and everything and notice that it's now called body three. So yes, it does matter, okay? So the target is what you always wanna keep. So the target is the, the mid part. Tool is this guy. I'll say okay. And now we're all in one part here. Okay, cool. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do, we're gonna start working on the back of this design. And that is to create the, you know, this section back here. It's kinda of hard to see, but there's these um, posts that come out and then there's these support ribs that kinda of support those posts. So again, using the drawing and the dimensions, I'm going to um, start creating that. Okay, so I'll create a sketch on this back face. 
kind of zoom up a little bit. I'm just going to draw a couple circles. I don't care what size so far. Then I'll come in and dimension those. I'll say I want that to be a 0.23. That was pretty close, actually. And same thing with that. I'll go ahead and just click on that existing dimension. There we go. And then I want to position them a certain location. So I'm going to say from the center, I want it to go from the center of the actual model, not the circle here, but I'm going to say from here. And that is supposed to be 1.4. And they are supposed to be from the center. Now you'll notice when I'm moving, it's kind of hard to see, when I'm moving my dimension, it's wanting to do an aligned dimension. And I want it to be a uh, vertical dimension. So I'm going to right mouse click and I can force it to be vertical. And so now you'll notice that I have a vertical dimension. It's kind of hard to see with the blue, but I'll go ahead and place it there. And that is supposed to be um, 0.475. And then the same thing here. I'll make those the same, 0.475. And then obviously I want this guy and this guy to be in line with each other. So there we go. Okay, now again, I'm gonna use the same sketch to um, create a couple different pieces of geometry. So these are gonna create the posts, obviously. But I also want to create the ribs. Now check this out. I'm going to do kind of a neat little trick here. I'm just going to draw a couple rectangles. Again, I'm not, I don't really care what size they are. I'm just going to kind of get, hey, I want some ribs in this particular area. Okay. Then I'm going to use my midpoint constraint because I want these ribs to line up with the center of that circle. So you can see it took that rectangle and it lined it up. So same thing here, midpoint to there, midpoint to there, and then finally a midpoint to there, okay? So I used the midpoint constraint to kind of line up these ribs. Then I can define the size. So for example, in fact, you know what? I might actually, uh, I'm gonna drag these circles out, I'm sorry, these rectangles out a little bit, like so. And then I'll throw my dimension of 0 0.01. These are pretty thin. So I'm going to say 0 0.01. And you'll notice that that rib stayed centered because of that midpoint constraint. I'll click on that existing dimension. Oops. And then I'll do this dimension here. Just click on the existing dimension. And now they're all 0 0.01 thick. Okay. Now these ribs don't go all the way to um, the inside face, so I'm going to offset. Now notice right now, if I hover over this edge, I, it highlights the whole thing. I only want this edge, so I'm going to turn off chain selection, and now you can see that it's going to offset just that edge. And I could say minus 0.1. And my rectangles actually extend past that just a little bit. And that's fine. That's what I want actually in this case. I want to make sure that they go past because we're going to extrude that profile you see right there with that curved edge. Okay. So we took some time to build that sketch, but we have the posts and we have the ribs. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. And here's another trick. You'll notice now, if I were to click here, I'd have to zoom in, and I'd have, there's a bunch of features in here that I'd have to select, right? It would take quite some time to do that. Well, if I go into the extrude command first, I can then draw a box. So I'm just gonna draw a box around that, and holding down my shift key, a box around that, and it's gonna select everything instead of having to me manually click okay so just a neat little tip there I'll go ahead and start to extrude and these need to be 1.6 I'm gonna say 1.6 
And again, I'm gonna say new body. Instead of joining, I'm gonna say new body. And we're gonna kind of work on this as a, like a subcomponent if you wanna think of it that way. So I'm gonna say new body and you'll notice that it, they stay gray. And I've got these guys here. I'll turn my sketch back on and then I'll extrude these guys. So I'm gonna click on the profiles. I have to zoom up a little bit to make sure I'm getting the, the profile, okay? Then I can say extrude. I'll start to drag. And you'll notice something interesting happening here, okay? You'll notice a lot of gray going on. Why is that? Well, th these profiles are touching this other body and it's wanting to say join. So in this example, I don't want them to join. I want to say these are new bodies. And you'll notice that that weird gray goes away, okay? And this is supposed to be um, 1.2, okay? Now the other thing I could have done, if it said join, I could come in and turn off mid, okay? And it's going to join to these bodies here. So just be aware, if I left that on, it's gonna to wanna to join to the whole thing. So I'm gonna turn off mid, I'll say okay, and it's gonna join that as one body. Okay, I can turn mid back on so we can kinda of see what it looks like. And let's turn our sketch off. Okay. So the next thing is there's a chamfer on this edge, and this is actually an angled edge slightly, but I'm gonna come in here and say chamfer. And I'm gonna to start to drag. Now, according to the drawing, this is not a equal distance. It's a two distance. But you'll notice the reason I started to drag was so I could see these arrows, and I know that that line goes farther back than this one here. And so it basically allows me to kind of visualize what that's supposed to look like. And I can see that this is supposed to be the point one, and this is supposed to be the point three. Okay, so it just basically spreads those arrows out for me. So that's why I do that little trick there. So we're gonna do both of those edges. Say okay. And then finally there's a screw hole that goes into here. So let's zoom up a little bit. I'll click on that face and say hole. Now you'll notice it's not centered. So the first thing I do is I start to drag and you'll, you'll see that little blue dot in the center. It'll automatically snap to it. So I'm just gonna drag and snap to that dot. The diameter is 0.1, but the depth is supposed to be 0.375. And it's a blind hole. So you'll see it has the little taper at the end. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll go ahead and say OK. And you can kind of see the chamfer down in there, like the, where the drill would go. I'll go ahead and repeat that again on this face. Drag it so it snaps, so you can kind of see there it snapped into place. Um, grab my last distance, 375, I'll say OK. And now I'm done with this region. And this is kind of what I was trying to talk about earlier, where we're kind of breaking it down into smaller pieces. We're done with it, so let's go ahead and mirror this. Now, would I combine it first and then mirror? Or would I mirror and then combine? Well, I'm going to mirror and then combine. Okay, because that way I can mirror a body instead of having to mirror a whole bunch of features. So let's go in here and say create mirror. What do we want to mirror? The body. So I'm going to click on that gray part. What's our mirror plane? It's this plane that kind of cuts through the center there. So I'm going to click on that say okay and we can see we've mirrored that to the other side we've got two separate bodies but i'm happy with them so let's say combine what's the target 
the big blue part, the mid. <laughs> what are the tool bodies? That guy and that guy. We want to join them together. We don't need to keep the tools. I'm going to say OK. And it's all one body now. But just like you've seen before, I can go back and edit anything in my timeline. You know, if I were to change, you know, the size of that hole, for example, from 0.1 to 0 0.05, it's going to mirror over to the other side. Okay, so cool little tip there, I hope. Okay, so we are actually near the end. The last thing we're going to work on is this little standoff you see right here at the very front that holds this um, light sensor. And you'll notice there's a little bit of detail to it. There's like a little cross that kind of holds everything in. And it's attached to the front of this, this part here and stuff like that. So we're going to work on that and then we'll be done. Okay, so I'm going to click on this front face right here and create a sketch on that kind of that front rib create a rectangle. I'm not sure where it's going to be quite yet, but I know that the overall width is supposed to be 0.64 and the overall height is supposed to be 0.6. Okay, let me move this off a little bit. Okay, now I want it to be centered right there, so I'm going to use my lovely midpoint constraint and now that's perfectly centered where I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and keep my sketch simple so it's literally a square. I'll say extrude. Now I want it to go in both directions. So I'm going to say symmetric and I want it to go to this face right there. So I just click on it and you can see that it's going to go 0.18 in one direction and 0.18 in the other direction. So it's sitting right on top of this little shelf right there. It's kind of hard to see with all the flashing. Okay. I am going to make sure this says new body because like I said before, instead of having to calculate all of these edges and faces and stuff like that, we're going to work on kind of like a subcomponent level. We're going to just basically start with a cube like this. Okay. Um, I want to fillet this top edge. So I'm going to go ahead and say fill it, start to drag. Now what size? I've shown this before. I love this trick. I'm going to say measure and then I can click on an edge length. So I'm not sure why that, I'm not sure why I have the two lines there. So let me set this to, actually I can click on that and it'll do it. It actually split it for me automatically. Um, so let me do that edge there and it goes all the way across. What I was hoping, I'm not sure why it was two separate lines. I must have, um, oh yeah, I know why, because I had that line across the top of this blue part for whatever reason, so it had split it down the middle. What I could have done is said measure this edge and then say divided by two. But the fact that it was already split for me, which was kind of nice, it was able to figure that out for me, okay? So let me, let me do that one more time. So for example, this edge here is, let me move so you can see it, 0.64 inches, okay? So if I were to come in here and say fill it, start to drag, I could come in and say measure and it would be 0.64 inches. So I would type in 0.64, but you get that result, which obviously is not correct. So I'm gonna say divided by two and now it'll do the full edge. Okay, so showed both methods there. So I created that little round top and it was kind of hard to see on the, uh, on the video, but if we take a look at this, it's, um, I don't even know, I don't have a good, <laughs> let me show it on the video actually. Um, let me turn this guy back on. And where is he? He's right here. It's kind of hard to see, but it, um, 
right there. It's kind of hollowed out down below where those wires are coming out. So I'm going to use the famous shell command again. So I'm going to kind of look at it from here. Say shell. I like to start to drag to kind of see the wall thickness so we can kind of see what that looks like. And in this case, um, it's going to be 0 0.08. But I also am going to select this top curve and watch the result that I get. <laughs> now, would you think of using the shell command to create this shape of a part? So here's where we start out with. We're shelling the back face, which is going to create these little ribs. But then when I select this top face, it's going to shell that out also. And very quickly, I created a fairly I wouldn't say complex, but a shape that looks like this using a rectangle and a fillet and a shell, basically. Then I can come in and say chamfer. By default, it remembers my last one was two distance, but in this case, it's an equal distance. And I'll do both of these edges at the same time. And let's just make them 0.16 according to the drawing. So. We've now just chamfered those little edges and it looks exactly like the the actual part okay okay moving on we're at close to the top of the hour but we're really close to being done so we might go a few minutes over like usual <laughs> I apologize um, I'll create a sketch on this front face and I'm gonna project this front face because there's some important information for example where the center of that fillet is. So I'm going to, again, using the, the sketch, um, the drawing here, I'm sorry, we're basically creating what you see here in detail D and detail C. Okay, so I'm using all of these dimensions to basically create this profile here. So I'm gonna go at a pretty reasonable pace here. I'll start by creating a slot so I'm going to do a center to center slot and I know that it's actually centered right here. I'm going to go ahead and just click up a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and just click to the right. Okay. Then I can come in and, and dimension this. So I know that that is a radius of 0 0.088 according to the drawing. And I know that the slot height is supposed to be um, 0 0.05 okay so there's that first section there okay the next thing I'm going to do is and this is kind of weird but I think it's kind of neat um, I want to create a rectangle and I want it to be touching this edge right here so I'm gonna go ahead and click and then I'm just gonna kinda come down whatever distance I don't really care in this case but what I do care is I want this point to be touching that edge. So I'm going to come in and say coincident that point with that edge and notice what it did to my rectangle. Now as I move this edge up and down you'll see that it's always touching the edges of those fillets, those arcs right there. It's pretty cool because they're both coincident. This um, dimension here is supposed to be 0.3, and you can kind of see how that updated. Okay, um, I'm going to do a circle here that touches that edge right there, and then I might trim that back. So I might trim that guy, that guy. And that guy and so now I have like equal thickness right there and I'm starting to kind of build the shape of what this is supposed to look like okay I'll draw another rectangle I'm just gonna do something kind of looks like this it's supposed to be 0.08 wide and I'm gonna do that exact same trick where I'm gonna say I want that point to be coincident with there and I want that point to be coincident with there. And you can see that it kind of self-centered it for me. 
and it's kind of hard to tell, but this is the profile. We're going to do the, the cross piece here, but you can kind of see how it's curving around and then going up. So that's why I wanted those touching right there. I could have used midpoint, but what would I have caught the midpoint to? So that coincident trick is kind of a neat tip to kind of center things on existing geometry. Okay, last thing, I'm just gonna draw a weird rectangle in here. I know that the width is supposed to be the same as that guy there, okay? And then I know that it's supposed to be a certain distance away from the side, which is 0 0.03. And from here to here is 0 0.03. And from here to here is 0 0.03. Just click on the existing dimension and now you can see that that's fully constrained. And that gives me that profile that I was looking for. So it took me some time to build it and I did do it in one sketch, but it's gonna create that complex geometry. So, okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's extrude, oops, sorry. I'll say extrude, start the pull out, and say 0.25. I want to join that to the existing gray part. There we go. I'm gonna turn that sketch back on. And again, you can see why I like to have these open. Just, just the one that I'm working on. I don't have all of them open, but just the one I'm working on. And then I can come back and select the uh, profiles that I want to machine away. So I'm just gonna grab all of these, including this one up here. We'll say extrude, keep dragging down too far, sorry. I'll say extrude, start to drag, and this time it's gonna cut through the geometry. And I just have to click on that back face. It's kind of hard to see, so let me go like right there it's gonna to snap to that back face. I'll say okay. I'll turn off my sketch to kind of simplify what things are gonna look like. And now we have that, that weird shape. I like what it looks like, okay. Um, then all I have to do is combine it. So I wanna keep the blue part. The tool body is that one. Don't need to keep it, we're gonna join it together. And it's all one body now. Okay, here's a neat tip. I'm gonna, I wanna fill at this edge. So I'm gonna say fill it, and they're supposed to be 0.1. And you'll see that it's gonna fill at that edge. I'm gonna go ahead and select both edges at the same time, and you'll see that it's actually gonna fill it the underside and fill it where it's joined to this part here. Now you can see why I combined them together. That wouldn't have worked if they weren't combined. I'll say okay, and there's that guy. Okay, last thing here, and then we'll, uh, we'll be done. So I'm going to, we need to mount um, a stepper motor here that's actually gonna drive the gears that actually are inside these little holes here. So I'm going to um, pick on this flat face, create a sketch, Project. I'm going to go ahead and project, um, you know, this hole here. Uh, maybe I'll project all of this geometry just so I have it for reference. There you can kind of see the center of the circle. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. I don't care what size right now. I'm going to say the midpoint of that rectangle is going to go to the, let's see, I want it to go to the, midpoint of the circle here or the center of the circle and so you can see how it moved that up then i could dimension this rectangle i'll bring it down here so you guys can kind of see it i want it to be 1.85 wide now i'm not going to worry about the height right now and you'll see why here in a second but i'm actually uh, happy with what that looks like so I'm going to select that profile, say extrude, and start to extrude back. Now you'll notice I'm always extruding kind of isometrically. I never hit extrude when I'm looking straight on because you can't tell what's going on. I can't tell if it's coming toward me or away from me. So I always like to 
rotate isometrically, and I'm going to extrude back. And in this case, um, minus 0 0.04. Sorry, minus 0 0.04. And once again, I'm going to say new body. Say OK. And we're now working on this as a new body. This is old news now. You guys have seen this trick many times. I love it though. Replace face. I want to replace that face with this curved face and boom, it snaps down to it. Even though they're two totally separate bodies, I was able to replace the face. Now you might say, couldn't you have drawn the rectangle down farther and you know projected this and trimmed it absolutely that totally would have worked okay but I really like that replace face feature okay now here's where it gets kind of cool we I have a stepper motor in fact I think I have yep here it is right here I, I downloaded it off of actually inside of fusion I'll show you what I mean by that um, but this is uh, from it's called a rotary tin can motor and I'm going to bring this in and bring it into Fusion and use the holes to define where the holes need to be. And I'll show you how I got this. So I just went to insert and instead of McMaster car, I said insert a manufacturer part. And I have a, a live stream on this where I, I talk about that. And so then I just did a search for stepper motor, found the one that I wanted and brought it in. Now, instead of having you guys have to do all that, I did upload it out um, onto Dropbox, and there's a link for it um, in the description of this video. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna come in and say, insert into current design. So this is how you guys will be doing it. You'll say, insert into current design. I'm gonna drag it back kind of where it needs to go. And then I'm going to orient it the correct direction. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees that way. So you can see how it snapped to 90. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. So now it's kind of in the correct location, correct orientation, I should say. Then while I'm still in my move command, there's a cool command in here called point to point. And I'm going to grab the edge of this circle right here and it's kind of hard to see but it's grabbing the center point okay then I'm gonna rotate a little bit and hover over like this face or this edge and you can kind of see that plus right there I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and it lined those points up well, let me kind of look at it from this direction so they are perfectly centered and that motor is now mounted where it needs to go and I can use that face to project. So I'm going to say project that circle and that circle there. Now I have a profile that I can click on. Let me grab those guys. Say extrude. How far? Well, I'm going to start to to drag backwards here. I'm just going to click on that face. Kind of hard to see because everything's kind of covered up, but we used the, uh, the shape of the stepper motor to define where those holes need to be. Okay. Pretty cool. And then I can come in and turn off that stepper motor and we're, we're back, basically back to our, just our little plastic part. Okay, now obviously I need something for that stepper motor to screw into, so I'm just gonna add some plastic here. So let's just do offset 0.1. I'm just gonna go ahead and offset these existing holes, 0.1. And then I'm gonna create some support ribs. And here's a neat little tip. I'm gonna hover over this edge, and as I drag down, you'll see it snap automatically to the midpoint. And I actually want these ribs to be halfway up the part. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, this time I'm going to go ahead and drag down into the body just to show you different methods to get kind of the same results. So I'm just going to kind of drag down. We'll dimension these ribs here. Um, they're supposed to be 
0 0.04. And same thing with this guy, 0 0.04. Okay, I'll finish my sketch. I like to rotate isometrically so I can kind of see what's going on. I'll extrude these circles. So we're gonna just add a little bit of geometry there. So I don't need it to be that thick. They only need to be 0 0.3. I'll turn my sketch back on and now I can use these rectangles and, and you'll notice that the profile is automatically split by the body. So I only need to grab these top pieces, say extrude, start to drag. Now notice again what's happening. So I'm going to turn off the mid. I do want them to join together. Um, but let me see, okay. I wanna make sure that they join together, but I don't want it to join with the mid part quite yet. Okay, so I'm gonna turn mid off, and these come out 1.5, and I'll say okay. If I turn mid back on, we can kinda of see what that's gonna look like. I'll turn off my sketch, and then the last thing here is I wanna add some draft to those ribs, um, just to kinda of angle them down. So to do that, I'm going to say Modify, Draft. Now I've shown this in the past. The draft plane, it's asking what's gonna hinge around. So for example, if I select this top face, you can see that this other face is gonna hinge around that and draft off of that. Well, what would I pick for this? A lot of people think that you would say this is your draft plane but that's the face that we actually want to hinge. So my draft plane is gonna be this big face here. The face I want to draft is gonna be that face there. And now you can see that it's hinging off of this face, off of this plane right there. So sometimes that can get a little bit confusing. A lot of people think that they would select that flat face, but in reality, it's this big one here. And so we're gonna do uh, 10 degrees. I'll do the same thing on that face there. Say okay. Um, turn my mid part back on. Let's just kind of see what that looks like. I'll turn my stepper motor back on. So what you can see, we just created all of that geometry there. I'm happy with it, so let's combine together. That's my body. My target, this is my tool, we want to join, and we all have one plastic body. Notice this is joined to that now, and how complex this was, and we started with basic shapes, and we used like rectangles, and used the shell command to really kind of speed up the design here. Um, I might do, you know, last thing I might do here is add, I don't like sharp, edges. So I'll say let's add a fillet um, 0.1. In fact I'll even do like that guy there, that guy there, and this guy. And this is all according to the drawing and then these edges right here. And I'm doing these all at in one step, right? So one fillet feature. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay and we are done. We'll hit save. Definitely want to save that. We don't want to lose it. Now my timeline honestly isn't overly complex. I don't think for something as complicated as this. Okay. I know we went 15 minutes over like usual. I apologize. Um, Use the drawing, use the, the uh, outline, watch the video a couple times, um, see if you can create this. I love that some of you are sharing your models out on the uh, Fusion 360 Facebook group. Some of you have been sending them to me via email. Here comes the good news and the bad news. Um, good news is Autodesk is very, very kind and a wonderful company to work for. They, uh, every four years, you get a six week sabbatical. Um, and my six week sabbatical starts this weekend. So I'm gonna be gone for six weeks and I can 
I can already hear people yelling at me through the uh, the chat. So I apologize for that, but it's a well-deserved six week sabbatical. There are gonna be other live streams happening. Make sure you subscribe to the Fusion 360 Live uh, channel if you haven't already. Um, just keep an eye out for these other live streams. I think Wayne's gonna do a couple, um, Jason, maybe even Angelo will do a cam one coming up. Um, but we'll continue this series when I get back. This isn't the end of the series. We're gonna do the laser and the wiring and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's gonna be a six week pause. So. With that, I want to thank everybody for your attendance. Um, uh, thank Angelo for helping out with the chat. I do come back later and read through all of the chats and all of the comments in the video, and I try to respond to those. So definitely leave comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, um, different ideas. I love seeing other people say, couldn't you have done it this way or shouldn't you have done it that way? Um, definitely put those in the comments. So with that, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.